I had become obsessed with revenge thrillers ever since I explored South Korean cinema. A moment so catastrophic, a loss so dear to a character leading them to a journey of vengeance, seeking for personal justice, only to realize in the process that you end up becoming a shell version of yourself and a monster beyond recognition. Movies like Old Boy and I Saw the Devil became such visceral experiences for me as it showcased not only exemplary filmmaking from a technical standpoint, but presented a presumably simplistic narrative but with the emotions that were so palpable that the narrative stands the test of time. Arun Mateswaran seems to hold the concept and emotion of revenge very close to him exploring the same themes in his first film rocky which i'm still so bummed out i didn't watch in theaters and is now available on an obscure malaysian ott platform called astro from my tamil speaking friends they only rave about the product for its raw and unfiltered treatment of the genre of a man set out to leave no stone unturned for the injustice in worked upon him while i still cannot wait for the day that this movie becomes available on an indian platform other than telegram sani kaidam explores the same themes for revenge making me even more excited for what might be in store when the creator collaborates with dhanush to embark upon another journey of blood gore and violence Sani Kaidam available on Amazon Prime Video focuses on the journey of Sangeya and Ponni played by Silva Raghavan and Kirti Suresh respectively why they take such drastic and bloody steps leaving a trail of carnage behind them is what the film explores the teasers and trailers of this film have not given anything away regarding the trauma that they endured so i leave it for you to experience it yourselves here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the film so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch it on Amazon Prime Video or not the underwhelming aspects emotional link and writing one of the debates that this film has sparked is the pressure for tamil directors to write and direct their projects what becomes very clear with the storytelling in this film is that arun is a phenomenal director knowing the visual vocabulary that will engage audiences but what is sporadically lacking in this film is the emotional link that ties the screenplay together arun uses flashbacks to make the audience understand the origin story of both the characters and their life when things were simpler but only the link between sangeya and ponni gets well established attempting to highlight a more peaceful time arun uses stylized shots in black and white but what looks beautiful lacks in emotional depth the moments between ponni and her husband and daughter are not highlighted enough for you to understand their dynamic before chaos ensued in their life the link to completely make you break down for the beautiful moments that they shared as a family are not explored and arun solely depends on the traumatic event to be the trigger to keep you invested in the film The journey of blood and gore absolutely kept me on the edge of my seat getting me more and more shocked at the sheer bloodbath in front of me but I wished for a more insight on their life before they were consumed by revenge another theme that is often explored in revenge thrillers is how characters come to the realization that they will feel hollow despite reaching their goal of personal justice the transformation of a person beyond recognition on this indestructible path is also something not explored in terms of themes in this movie the good the male savior trope removed what we have usually seen in indian cinema regarding revenge thrillers is that the antagonists or individuals who are morally corrupt cause grave and inhumane acts to a leading man's romantic interest or family only for the man to take up arms and embark upon this journey of carnage they fall under the male savior trope that has been popular for several decades in indian cinema Sani Kaidam is about someone taking up the reins of their own life and it comes as a refreshing change in a genre where usually women take a back seat and seek for help. Yes, I have seen Mahanati and this has to be the most powerful performance of Kirti Suresh investing everything to portray Ponni and continuing on a journey consumed by rage and fire. Cinematography and background score This film is visually stunning and Yamini Yagnamurthy is one of the essential components for making the screenplay so engaging. Some of the shots of this film will literally give you goosebumps and it actually makes me think about the spectacle that it would have been on the big screen. The film transitions between stylized shots to showcase the origin story of characters in black and white to an ordinary color palette when it showcases the life before the gruesome act. The transition is unassuming and organic, but as both the characters embark upon this bloody journey, the palette also gets grainier and darker, highlighting the character's motive and how deeply they are consumed by rage, now beyond repair or return, of who they were before the journey. 
Blood playing an essential role in the second half of the film has this one shot that has an imagery of Pony being presented as a warrior and blood spilling on her face that just sends shivers down my spine. The music by Sam makes its presence clear and apparent in this narrative, not taking center stage but often announcing the arrival of the madness. The background score usually denoted through the sounds of wildlife, chimes, drums, act as a foreshadowing of a violent act and it beautifully acts as an essential component of the film's storytelling. Direction Arun Mateswaran is a creator that will make South Korean makers really proud. Raw, violent, gory, yet stylized and proficient in visual storytelling. Arun gets you invested in a story that is simple in its core, but effectively executed through both skilled filmmaking and proficient performances. I often say this, the audience doesn't necessarily want complex storytelling all the time, but rather simplistic screenplays, if done effectively, can engage you tenfold. If one can be convinced that John Wick kills hundreds of people because his dog died, it has more to do with the conviction of the storytelling and Arun excels in exactly that. It has me so excited for his upcoming venture with Dhanush as well. Performances Kirti Suresh is one of the most popular faces of Indian cinema. Nationally and globally loved, people really took notice of her ability as a performer in the film Mahanati. And I was extremely disappointed in seeing the kind of movie she was associated with after that film. Commercial notoriety aside, Kirti was reduced to the romantic interest or a loving sister that barely explored her ability as a performer. I think she has absolutely blown it out of the park as Ponni. Consumed by absolute hatred and vengeance, seeing her long shot of wanting to kill everything in her way and shout incessantly as she drives her matador through an alley of goons, one would unexplainably be drawn into the sentiment and rage that consumes her. Seeing Selva Raghavan as Sangeya was also such a treat. A man with nothing to lose and stone cold and stoic in his approach towards murdering beasts in the form of humans. He accounts for the demeanor of a ruthless killer that was so menacing to see. It was kind of sad to see how he was wasted in a film like Beast and they've really explored his ability as a performer in this movie. As I previously said, revenge thrillers if done right can account for such engaging movie experiences and Sani Kaidam guarantees exactly that. It's gore, blood and violence galore and I'm not complaining at all. Even though Arun states that his next venture with Dhanush isn't going to be anything like his previous two ventures, it makes me thoroughly excited for what he has in store in the future because I've instantly become a fan of his craft and ability. And that was a video guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about the movie. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the handle's right in front of you. Follow me at JammyPants4. Also, please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.